Hey guys, how's it going? So a few things today. I'm gonna finish up planting the bulbs that we weren't able to finish the other night because all of our potting soil was frozen solid. <laughs> we got three bins planted and we've since added a fourth that I'm gonna plant my remaining allium bulbs in. Um, then we're gonna plant up some daffodils. Then I want to uh, open up a box that Gardener Supply sent out. I don't even know what's in it, but it does say open immediately. So I thought we could do it today in this video. And then we're gonna do a little cooking. So I'm gonna go into the root cellar and do a little shopping for some some of our produce and then we're gonna make a whole grain penne with a pan fried butternut squash and oregano if I can find oregano in the greenhouse <laughs> and uh, some chicken so I think it should be kind of a fun afternoon so starting out here and you guys wouldn't even believe what it looked like out here this morning we had snow and now it's nice <laughs> it's still a little chilly but these are the three tubs we had out in the new property this last year and I had dahlias and plain the blue salvia and some strawberries and they were really wonderful and it's nice to add this fourth one here so we've already got it filled all the way up this full with soil I've got my bulbs sitting here in the cart along with some starter fertilizer and my gloves and then these are the containers we're gonna plant up with daffodils I've already got the soil dug out uh, down to the level where we need them I had these topiaries in there this year I don't know that I'm gonna put them back in because these little things that pop down in the soil I think that they might be right where the bulbs need to be I don't know we'll kind of play that by ear either way I can always come and pop some Christmas greens in here and that would look pretty as well and I did want to see if the soil in this raised bed had thawed yet. We couldn't plant in it the other day because it was a solid piece of soil. So I put the greenhouse top back on it. Still pretty solid. I don't know that we're going to actually be able to plant in this unless we go put this in the greenhouse for a little while to soften up a bit. <laughs> there he is. Hey, Russell. And even though these are planted, I'm going to go ahead and top them up the rest of the way with soil. Like this is what we ran into the other day. And it's still pretty solid here. And I did mention briefly in the video where we started this project that we did move all of these containers out here. These are the um, unique stone containers we filled full of bulbs. And we just had such good luck with all of our bulbs that were outside in containers last year that wintered in their containers outside, um, as opposed to the ones that wintered in the cold frame. Because we had such an unseasonably warm winter that I just don't think it got cold enough in there. And I think we're kind of fixing to have the same thing happen this year. I mean, I see several nights in the teens coming up, but it still stays a lot warmer in there. And I don't know, I don't really want to risk it. If it gets really close to zero or under, we'll move all these back in. Just wanted to mention that. Let's zip this back up. All right, they're all finished. So all four of these have 25 alliums in them a piece, which, you know, when you look at a container this big, if you were talking like tulips or daffodils, 25 wouldn't be near enough. But these Globemaster alliums, they get pretty good size and the leaves on them take up quite a bit of space. So I anticipate these looking really full and really glorious. I think they're gonna be so pretty. And if, if there's any room left over, I can always pop in some annuals uh, kind of in between them. And I think that would be pretty as well. And then I did get these containers done on either side of the greenhouse. I slid the, the topiary form back in and I just did it really slow and gently. And I think I put enough soil on top of the bulbs this time so that I didn't actually hit any of them. However, you can see how these are shaped. They kind of like, if a daffodil were to grow up right here, it would run into this. I'll probably pull these out, but not until next spring maybe. Um, and I think that would be totally fine. That way I have a little vertical interest. I'll pop some Christmas greens around the base just to soften them up just a little bit. Um, but at least they have something pretty in them for now. And I think we ended up with about 50 of those daffodils in each one of these pots. 
So that will be a really, really pretty bouquet. So now that all the bulbs are planted, I think we should run into the root cellar and grab what we need for dinner and head inside. Okay, so we're in the root cellar now and we need to gather for this recipe butternut squash enough to make two cubes of diced butternut squash. It calls for a shallot, but my shallots were soft. I only had a couple left. They were from my parents' garden. So we're just gonna use a regular onion and we need garlic and then oregano from the greenhouse. I've got one plant I think of oregano out there and it looks pretty bad, but I think we might be able to get just enough to make this recipe work. And there's my pail I'm gathering into today. I bought a couple of boxes of oranges from a fundraiser down at the community college but everything's holding really well in here. Everything's looking great. Humidity is holding, temperature's holding. So, so far, loving it so much. I actually made this kind of hash dinner the other night. It was, you know, diced up carrots and potatoes, sweet potato, butternut squash, um, onion, garlic, uh, yeah, did I say carrots? Anyway, I was able to come out here and get all of those things from this fruit cellar, and when I had everything all cut up in my pan, I was like, and then, you know, you um, you uh, fry that all up and in the end you put like a fried egg on top and the eggs were from our chickens. So other than the spices, the whole dinner was from our property and that was amazing. also calls for red chili flakes so I grabbed a couple of my dried peppers all right let's head to the greenhouse all right so here's the herb planter I put together like early spring you remember that parsley there's chives <laughs> there's my sad little oregano but I think there's enough here I'm just gonna pluck off whatever looks usable Mm, smells amazing. Ooh, jackpot. I think that'll do it. Oregano is one of those flavors, kind of like rosemary and thyme, where I usually have the amount that the recipe calls for. I'd rather add more in after it's done cooking than have it be too strong, and those are some really strong flavors. Okay, now we can start cooking. All right, guys, so this is the very first time I've ever tried this recipe. It's a penne with butternut squash from the Food Network Kitchen. We'll go ahead and link it down below. But all the ingredients sounded like really good together and I think it's gonna be a really hearty pasta dish. I am gonna be adding chicken though. That will be my only difference. And I will be um, adding a little bit less oregano in the end. Uh, but I think what we'll do is go ahead and prep all of our stuff. So we have, we need to dice and peel the butternut squash. I've got cremini mushrooms, eight ounces. So I am doing a little bit fewer mushrooms too than the recipe calls for because that's the size of package they came in. I'll slice those up, mince the garlic, mince the onion, and then I've got my mortar and pestle out to grind up the chilies that I brought in. And I'll probably get the pasta on and get that cooking. So we just will have a lot of different irons in the fire here for a minute. And then it looks like it just all comes together really quick. Like it says prep time, 15 minutes, cook time, 15 minutes. So total 30 minutes and I'm all about that. So let's get to work. All right, so far I don't have too much chaos going on. I've got pretty much everything prepped except for the Parmesan cheese. 
Um, I thought I'd wait till I got most of my cooking stuff done. Now I just need everything to cook. So this is what I was left with at the produce. I'll use the rest of this onion. There's like half an onion left tomorrow night. And then I'll just use off of this garlic for a little bit. And then, hi bud, what are you doing? You're going to Papa and Nana's house? Oh, well, we might go down to Andrew's. Oh, oh, you might go to Andrew's seed. <gasps> that sounds fun, buddy. Mama, yeah. Let's go in the truck. You want to go in the truck? I have to do some cooking, bud. I'm going to be making dinner while you guys run down there. What's that right there? That's a butternut squash. Do you want to smell it? <sighs> That's right. You want to smell the mushrooms? You gonna smell the oregano? I smell and like, I smell like this. how about we smell this one? We'll wait on the peppers. That's onion and garlic. Oh, yeah. yeah, that one's really spicy. That could actually make you sneeze. So we want to be careful with that one, bud. Look. You can look at it, sure. I wouldn't smell it though, baby. Don't get too close, okay? Because that's hot pepper. But you kind of like spicy things, don't ya? I like that one. Yeah. That like yummy. Does it look yummy? Did you get to see your daddy fly the drone outside? Did he get it stuck in a tree? Yeah, I just did. What happened when the pizza car hit the tree outside? No, that's the drone hit a tree. Oh, really? Drone hit a tree. Oh, drone hit a tree. Yeah. Pizza car not broke on the tree anymore. The pizza car wasn't out there breaking the tree. He's talking about the door dash that hit our maple tree out there. He likes to talk about it about every day. Oh, Cheddar, what was he doing? Sleeping. Oh. All right, bud, have fun at Andrew's Seed. Say hi to Papa and Nana for me. Hey. <laughs> See, ya. See ya. Anyway, um, I waited to cut these. You know, this thinner part of the squash is a little bit more uh, time consuming to cut. So I'm gonna just cut this later and I'll use it later. And then I've got stuff that can go outside. Right there. Oh, except for that, that, that can't go. It doesn't compost. So here's my setup. There's really not that much to it. So butternut squash there. We've got the onion and garlic in that bowl. The peppers ground up beautifully. And oregano's awesome, smells really good. There's our mushrooms. And I've got the olive oil and some pepper. And I also have my grater out for the Parmesan cheese. Looks like I can get my pasta in now. This is the pasta I am using. And there's our chicken and I'll get that on here in just a minute. So basically, I'm just gonna follow the directions at this point. It looks like I cooked the squash first for like five minutes, take it out of the skillet and then I put in the mushrooms, cook those. Um, and then I add the garlic, the onion, and the red pepper flakes. And then I add the pasta and the squash. And you do reserve some of the cooking liquid. So some of the water, that starchy water. Um, we'll, we'll save some of that. And then you add Parmesan in the end. So this should be pretty easy. Here we go. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. Looking back, I probably would have held back a little bit of the oregano so I had a little bit of green garnish for the top, 
but I went ahead and used my uh, carrot peeler to peel off some bigger chunks of Parmesan you can see on the top for a little bit of added texture. And there's the chicken that I just pan fried separately, but everything else cooked in one pot, which was really nice. And then I've got a little piece of garlic bread right there. So I estimated a little bit wrong when I told Erin how long I thought this whole thing would take. Because you know when you're filming something while you're doing it, it always takes usually twice as long, but it was really fast. This was a really, really easy recipe. So I wanna try it while it's still hot. I've got a bite here. Butternut squash, mushroom, pasta. There's a little chili flake and some garlic and onion it looks like I got everything. So here we go. Mmm. That is good. Oh. Now I think the chili flakes are what make it. Chili flakes and then you get that sweetness from the squash. Mmm. Mmm. And definitely salting, using the salt and pepper at every step where it tells you to do that. I think that that's necessary because there's really not a sauce here. I mean, you mix Parmesan cheese and it's grated. Um, so you get kind of that cheesiness, but um, it doesn't give you that salty vibe. I like a lot of salt in my food though. So that's, that could be just personal preference. And then like, honestly, I don't even think the chicken's needed unless you're Aaron. A lot of times I add the chicken because I know Aaron would like it. Mm. It makes me so excited when I find a good recipe like this. And you know what, I'm just remembering that I said we were gonna open a Gardner supply box, so I think we still have time to do that. So let me go grab that box. I'm gonna get another bite here for the road and we'll get that open. Looks like we got an amaryllis. Look at that pot, isn't that pretty? So it says it's a rose cybister potted amaryllis. Let's look that up on their website. Look at that. That is going to be gorgeous. Oh, that makes me so excited. Not only that, but I always love it to get the amaryllis in these pots because they're tight that don't, don't have drain holes and I can use them as vases later on. All right guys, so that is gonna wrap it up for today's video. I just got a text from Aaron. He said they're on their way home, so we're gonna all sit down and have dinner together. And honestly, this recipe is a keeper. I mean, being the first time I made it, I kinda can tell, I mean, you guys probably know, you can read through a recipe and you can tell if it's something that you're gonna like. And when I read this one, I thought, oh yeah, I think I'm gonna love that. And you know who else would love this is my parents. I need to make this and have them over sometime because they would really enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just seeing those bulbs go in, I'm super happy to have that buttoned up. I don't like to leave projects like loose, loosey goosey out there and not buttoned up. I like to like start something and finish it before I move on. So it always kind of bugs me when I know I've got stuff out there that I still need to do. I still have bulbs to plant, you guys still. Um, and it looks like in the next week, 10 days, it's supposed to be pretty cold but dry. So I think I'll be able to get it done. Uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.